Hello everyone, today we'll be discussing how muscles can contract and the underlying mechanisms on how this occurs. So firstly we'll discuss how anatomy of a muscle, the skeletal muscle looks like and how this could, um, how this ties into muscle contraction. Uh, skeletal muscles are present in your biceps, triceps, quadriceps, and uh, basically any kind of muscle that is important for locomotive function. And when you look um, at the image, you can see that there's an epimesian layer that surrounds the muscle, and this is important for maintaining the structure of a muscle um, during contraction and relaxation. Within this muscle, there are fascicles which themselves are also composed of smaller muscle fibers. Um, these fascicles are surrounded by a paramecium, um, which also is done to preserve the, the structure of these fascicles. And the muscle fibers are also surrounded by a, a mesium, but this one is an endomesium. Um, and contraction basically occurs in these muscle fibers um, which we'll go look deeper into in the next image. So when you see here, uh, this is a, a mic, uh, zoomed in picture of a muscle fiber. Um, in this image, the most important ones we're going to explain right now are sacrolemma and the T tubule. So the sacrolemma is important for conducting um, an action potential from the neurons to the muscles. And this will be explained later on, but it, the end product will be to release calcium to the sacrolemurs. Um, when you look at the networks um, at the bottom image, you can see that there's a T tubule, and this is basically where the the action potential from the sacrolemma is transferred to the T tubules, which eventually results uh, in calcium release. Now these muscle fibers, when you look deeper into them, are composed of many sacromeres and these sacromeres um, contain a myosin which is the purple line in the middle and these bulges that you see on the out outside of these um, myosins, um, these bind to the actin on the thin filaments. The thin filaments are the light green um, lines that uh, surround the, the myosin heads. And when this, when these two bind, it causes a contraction where the Z lines is are the distance between the Z lines is reduced, and the myosin heads would pull the thin filaments towards the end line, as you see in the image. Um, on the right when comparing the top and the bottom image. Now how does contraction actually work? So firstly it all occurs when an action potential arrives at the neuromuscular junction. When this occurs, acetylcholate is released from the synapse and it binds to the receptors in the muscle resulting in excitation. And this excitation causes a transfer of the action potential to the, along the T-tubule and results in the calcium being released. Um, when calcium is released, this eventually results in a contraction occurring. And as you see in the image at the bottom, the, the muscle shortens and it produces um, tension. It causes tension in the muscles and reduces the, the length of the fibers. Now comes. Um, now we can explain the role of calcium in muscle contraction. So as you can see here in the picture, there is troponin, and troponin basically blocks the actin on the uh, uh, via the tropomyosin, which is a thin line which um, which covers the actin and this only occurs when there is no calcium present in the sacrolemur. However, once calcium enters the sacromere, 
This results in a shifting of the trophomycin away from the actin and allows the myosin heads to bind to the actin. And this causes a contractive state. And if there is no calcium present, this causes a, this is called a relaxed state. Now, now we go into the sliding uh, filament. So the whole action of myosin heads binding to actin is called a cross bridge. And these cross bridges need to slide to allow the filaments to, to move along closer to the M line. And this occurs when the myosin head binds to the actin. The myosin would undergo a power stroke, which is basically where it pulls the thin filaments towards the M line. And this action would release ADP and phosphorus. This release would eventually cause ATP to bind to the myosin head and causes the detachment of the myosin head from the actin. When this occurs, it allows the myosin head to relax again and it binds to the actin filament, actin, which is further to, um, which is closer to the Z line. And once it occurs, the whole process occurs again, where it pulls the thin filament, detaches, attaches to the next actin, pulls it, and continues that way, resulting in a sliding action, which is why it's called the sliding filament. And this whole sliding action results in the contraction of the sacromere. And when you take the whole, the bigger picture of this, when a lot of these sacromeres contract at the same time, the muscle fiber contracts as well. And this causes the general muscle in the long run to also contract. This is basically the general concept of um, muscle contraction. And I hope you guys, um, it helped you guys understand the whole mechanism. Um, for more information, uh, you could email us, which is in the descriptions on our um, YouTube channel. And please subscribe as this would help out our channel.